Here are five more underrated but awesome common items in D&D. The Subtle Mind Crystal. This is a crystal so subtle that nobody has heard about it, but it's awesome. The mind crystals are a series of gems of differing rarities that act as a single-use metamagic option. So the subtle mind crystal is basically the sorcerer's subtle spell, but slightly worse. It modifies a spell with a casting time of one action, letting you cast it without somatic or verbal components. Basically, you cast it invisibly, without giving any indication that you're casting anything thing at all. For a start, this means the spell can't be counterspelled, because counterspell requires you to see someone casting a spell, and if you subtle cast a spell, you can't be seen casting it. That's why so many sorcerers take the subtle spell metamagic. But even better is the social implications of spell casting mid-conversation. An undetectable detect thoughts, charm person, or guidance mid-interaction can completely shift the balance of a social encounter. It also has evil applications. One of my players used it to detonate a fireball immediately after a priest finished publicly casting mass healing word. As far as the onlookers saw, the priest shouted some magic words and then a fireball went off and killed a bunch of people. Perfect assassination, perfect framing. It was also the moment I realized my party were a little more chaotic evil than I anticipated, but it was also very funny. So, Fair dues. Even for sorcerers, subtle spell is one of those metamagics they wish they could take, but it's hard to justify early compared to the very powerful twin spell and quicken spell. This is a great solution. Grab a few of these, and any caster can enjoy sneaky spell casting without metamagic investment. Also, there's a quirk in the rules which technically means these are free. Common items cost 100 gold, and consumable items cost half as much. All mine crystals turn into non magic gems worth 50 gold after use, so you can buy one for 50 and then sell it on to get your money back. Obviously no DM would allow that, but it's an interesting bit of trivia on top of a fantastic, underrated item for spellcasters. Cuddly Strixhaven Mascot. This one is just so cool. It is a cuddly stuffed toy animal based on the Strixhaven mascots, although you could totally flavor it to be any animal that you like. One of my players is a moon druid brown bear, who walks around with a a nude, plushy, stuffed human. Again, very chaotic group. The item is adorable. The description even says that it is perfect for cuddling, and you can apply it to your arm, leg, or shoulder to carry it around hands-free. But it is also powerful. Anytime you make a save to avoid or end the frightened condition, one of the most common conditions in the game, you make that save at advantage. This is amazing for barbarians, fighters, paladins, basically any class in the game who want to be engaging enemies at close range. That's because the frightened condition stops you moving towards the object of your fear and gives you disadvantage on all attack rolls and ability checks. Now this would be good if it only gave advantage on one saving throw per day, but it doesn't. It works on every single save against the Frightened Condition until you succeed. Once you've succeeded on a Frightened Saving Throw using this feature, you can't use it again until the next dawn. But that shouldn't really matter, because most Frightened Effects, like the Red Dragon's Frightful Presence, say that once you succeed against the save once, you are immune to that effect for the next 24 hours. One success is really all you need. But wait, it's even better than that, because once you succeed, the mascot simply says that you can't use it again until the next dawn. But you could toss the mascots to an ally, and they can use it on their next save. There's no attunement required. You can just pass around your emotional support there, and everyone feels a little bit braver. Also, it's just a funny roleplay thing for the barbarian to carry around a plushy bunny rabbit called Frank. And now we get to... <coughs> Hello there. My name is Wesley Buttocks, and I would like to sell you this egg. Um, okay, no thank you. I'm trying to record. But this is an orb of Dragon Command. You just said it was an egg. It's clearly an egg. I would like some money for this. 
egg-shaped orb of Dragon Command. Oh, I am so sick of these terrible merchants. Well, what are you going to do about it, bro? Well, I'll just grab the Wanderer's Guide to Enchanted Emporiums. Wanderer's Guide to Enchanted Emporiums is out now on Kickstarter, a 200-page tome that redefines how you deal with magic items in 5e and provides everything you need to create a world of magic. We're talking rules and price lists for trading items, 100 fully illustrated items, a simple and flexible crafting system, 5 plus flavorable subclasses, and 25 plus ready-to-play magic shops. One of which was created by me! Out now on Kickstarter, link below. Check out Wanderer's Guide to Enchanted Emporiums. Wanderer? I hardly know her! <laughs> was that funny? Was that good? Good. The Masquerade Tattoo. This is a really simple one. The Masquerade Tattoo is an attunement tattoo that can take any shape or design. You can also change its shape at will as a bonus action. So you could walk around town with this perpetually shifting, transforming, beautiful artwork all over your body. More importantly though, the tattoo lets you cast the spell Disguise Self once per day. A spell so good, there's an entire Eldritch invocation just to give Warlocks access to it. You, your clothes, Clothing, armor, weapons, and any objects you're carrying are disguised, and you can even change your height to be up to a foot bigger or smaller and your general body proportions. The only way to tell the disguise from this tattoo is false is if someone uses an action to make an investigation check and then passes a DC 13 to see that it is false. But unless you actually give someone a reason to investigate you, the change is undetectable. You're basically Mystique from the X-Men. Obviously, this is great for stealing things or concealing weapons, because the objects you are holding are disguised with you. They are cloaked by the illusion. It's also great for just sneaking around, distracting guards, or, of course, comboing with the actor feet to perfectly replicate any other humanoid's appearance and voice. Disguise Self is just a great spell, and this tattoo is usable by anyone, not only spellcasters, letting barbarians, monks, and rogues get in on some magical roleplay shenanigans. The Pot of Awakening. Okay, let's talk about what power means. Because although making things explode sure is powerful, creating sentient life at common rarity is pretty crazy. Of course, you can create life for free if you just bang someone, but that takes nine months. This bad boy can create life in just one. If you plant an ordinary plant in this pot, after 30 days, it will magically transform into an awakened shrub, a creature with a stat block that can move around and take actions. 10 hit points is actually quite a lot for a CR zero creature. That's more hit points than a kobold, a goblin, a mastiff, or a cultist. It's basically your own baby Groot. Really though, the power is social. This thing is indistinguishable from a normal plant while it isn't moving. Plonk it down just about anywhere or let it sneak somewhere you need it to be and nobody is looking twice. You can give it as a gift to a crime leader or get it in the guard captain's office and it can just sit there in wait, listening in for information. Then when it hears something juicy, it can sneak off to meet you when it's all clear and give you that information. I mean, this thing has 10 intelligence and can speak. It's smarter than most martial characters. It's also like the cheapest army ever. An artificer can craft these pots for free from level two, slowly building up an army of awakened shrubs. It would probably take too long for the players to do this to any sizable degree, but imagine the applications for an NPC artificer villain who had infested the entire world with sentient plants. Every shrub a spy. It can also keep watch as a sentry at night and scream when it sees something, give advantage on your checks by taking the help action, or pour potions into your mouth as its action every turn in combat for passive regeneration. It can also attune to magic items that you no longer need or that are risky to use, like a horn of blasting, which deals 5d6 thunder damage in a 30-foot cone 
but does come with a 20% chance of making the plant explode. Last but not least, it is friendly towards you. It's just a positive influence to have in your life. A little plant buddy to tell you you're doing okay. Before we get to number one, here are three honorable mentions, which aren't technically common magical items because they're not magic items, they're adventuring gear. However, they are all cheaper than even a common magic item and should be readily available. Caltrops are nasty little weapons that work in D&D just like they work in real life. You spread them on the ground and they slow down creatures trying to move through that area. Any creature that enters an area you have covered with Caltrops needs to make a DC 15 dexterity saving throw, which is quite high for the early game, or stop moving, take one point of piercing damage, and have their movement speed reduced by 10 feet. These make for great cheap traps. Cover a wide area in them in advance of a battle, lure your enemies in, and blast them to pieces as they struggle to get through. They also aren't consumed on use, so you can just pick them back up when you're done. Acid is also fantastic in any D&D game, dealing 2d6 damage on a hit. It can also dissolve through simple locks and chains. The real power here is to get a bunch of vials, tie them together in a mesh bag, and hurl them at an enemy with the spell Catapult, dealing frankly crazy damage on a hit. The uncommon item, the Alchemy Jug, can create infinite acid, and all artificers can make one of those from just level 2. Finally, shout out to Walloping Ammunition. It functions just like normal ammunition, except the target needs to make a strength saving throw when hit or fall prone. Now, the DC of the strength save is 10, which is quite low, but knocking a flying enemy prone is ridiculously good because they fall out of the air, take a ton of falling damage, land on the ground, and everyone can pounce on them. All good archers should carry some. They're so cheap, and it's just a strict upgrade on a regular arrow. And finally, we get to the perfume of bewitching. Did you ever just smell so good that people do things for you? This is that poison ivy mind control level stuff. Basically, you use one action to squirt yourself with this perfume, and then you have advantage on every single charisma check directed at a humanoid of CR1 or below for the next Hour. If you thought eloquence bards or rogues with expertise in persuasion were overpowered before, this kicks that up to the next level. We are talking advantage on every deception, intimidation, persuasion, or performance check. Couple this with proficiency or expertise in any of those skills, and you're basically the most charming person in the universe. It also works with abilities that cause charisma checks, like the swashbuckler rogue's panache if you ever use it against an appropriate creature. Just something to bear in mind. But it's the out of combat stuff that really goes hard. D&D is a role play game, so a buff to the skills that let you spout nonsense to escape the consequences of your shenanigans is very powerful. And the fact that it lasts a full hour is kind of crazy, giving you advantage on potentially dozens of charisma checks. Slam this on and go and seduce or bluff your way through any number of townsfolk. Simply amazing. And remember, just like all the aforementioned items, a level 2 artificer can create them for free with the Replicate Magic Item Infusion. These are your bread and butter items. They are common, they should be easy to find, and you should be using them like you use the classic common items, like potions of healing. Remember to check out the Patreon, where new members can pick up four full D&D magazines. That's four new races, four new subclasses, four full ready-to-play adventures with maps, and a bunch of magic items, feats, and rules expansions to D&D all if you sign up today. Link to that's in the description. Remember to like and subscribe, check out other videos on the channel, and uh, yeah, that's basically all I got. See you next time.